Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video. We do hope that you're all doing okay. Guys, just before we do get started with today's video, I did just want to mention at the beginning rather than at the end, because I know quite a lot of people don't see it. If you do happen to reach out to us on Instagram, please always include your mobile phone number. Guys, so you can see by the thumbnail, the Renault Kango that we got offered when we went up to Wolverhampton, initially, we was buying one van. And when we got there, there was a whole bunch of vans there. And we ended up leaving a bid for another three vans. And we ended up purchasing them. They was all part of probate. It's been going on in the background for quite some time. We had to wait quite a long time to hear back about the vans. So, we ended up buying them. And you would have seen the videos on them by now. But... John, our guy up there, actually reached out and said, Rob, there could be another van. Now, a lot of you would have already seen that one as well. When we went to pick up the welfare unit, we actually had a little play with that Kango, and it is possibly a sabotaged vehicle. So the story is they all went into storage in the garage next door to where they was for sale because ultimately all those vans was on a forecourt for sale. And the people in that garage <coughs> said that that van was a non-runner. But John assured me that that van was a runner and it was actually prepped and on the forecourt for sale. And he knew that because it had had the sticker put on the bottom of the door and it had the for sale sign in it. So he said that he thinks that the people next door wanted to buy it and basically... I left him a bid for it, and that bid's been accepted, and I think I mentioned that in the last video. So that van is on its way here at the moment, but I just want to show you that there is actually solid proof that that van was for sale on a forecourt. We left a reasonable bid for it, um, reasonably cheap, actually, just to allow for any major mechanical issues. Like we said, it's supposed to be sabotaged he don't actually know is there something in the engine as the fuel bin tamp we just don't know so we left a cheeky little bid for it and we've managed to buy it and worse way if we've got to put an engine in it we've got to put an engine in it so the guy's on his way to drop it off anyway let me show you these pictures so this is where we're going to see the proof guys car vertical i've punched the reg in mileage okay theft okay accidents okay never been private hire so everything there was good was manufactured 1st of the 1st, 2016, registered in the United Kingdom. we got a maintenance record there for the 12th, 2017. MOT there, 11 19, and was on sale the 5th, 2020. This is the interesting bit. Was on sale, United Kingdom, 11th, 2020. So we scroll a little bit further down. The mileage record we'll always have a look at because that is the bit we're interested in. Make sure there's no discrepancies. It didn't show any right at the top. 61,000 miles on its last MOT. This is all of the countries that this check was performed in. And a little bit further down here, we got the how many days it takes to sell this vehicle. And then this bit here, which is very interesting. This vehicle was previously listed for sale for 6495 on the 5th 2020 and the 11th 2020 which is what John actually told us down here we got all the specs and equipment and all of the extras that was on that van when it was purchased new so they're all there and the list goes on and on and on you can click show more but a little bit further down here is the interesting bit so we've actually got photos there uploaded on the 5th 2020 of that actual van for sale on the garage forecourt with the sticker at the bottom there just like he told us and there was nothing wrong with this van at all so something's gone a little bit untoward with it on this uh, checklist here guys car vertical there is nine helpful tips and tricks you can use right at the bottom of the check to help you when purchasing your vehicle i am going to show you a quick example of what a check would look like at the top if there was an issue straight off the bat as soon as you put the reg in we're going to use this opal astra purely as an example and you can see there mileage okay theft 
this vehicle is reported stolen. Guys, I want to thank Car Vertical once again for the continued support on the channel. To benefit with a 10% discount, use the code SRUK on checkout or use the link in the description or the pinned comment. Let's get on with the video. Before we actually do anything with it, <clears throat> I've chucked a good jump pack on it and I'm just doing a scan because I couldn't do this while we was there. And guys, honestly, it has got so much ECM, ABS, IC, SRS, just UPC, PAS, radio, everything has got fault codes. We're only at 58%, so I'll wait till it's completely finished and we'll have a look and see what the most serious ones are because we know like airbag, radio, things like that are not going to stop it from running. One of you actually pointed this out in the comments and said, Rob, try this. Main relay control circuit, short to earth. Inlet air flat position, clutch switch signal, fuel flow regulator, computer internal electronic failure proportional richness sensor so this one someone did actually say to me give that a try now could this be a simple case of someone's put a jump pack on this van around the wrong way apparently there is a main fuse in here there it is there is that blown i don't think so but we get the meter across that and try it. Could be, couldn't it? But also, I don't know if I'm barking up the wrong tree here, but when I went to Stevenson's, he had loads of Mercedes with the bonnets open. And I said, what's wrong with them? He said, they've all got the Renault engine in them, 2016 on, and they cover all of the wiring looms in peanut oil. I know quite a lot of you are going to think I'm crazy saying that, but honestly, do the research. And they had at least 10 cars in there that they was doing wiring jobs on because rats had eaten through it. Let's get the meter across that, try it, and also clear the codes as well because we just don't know. You can see how long it's been sitting for. Could have got some water in the fuse box if the lid weren't on it properly. We just don't know. Let's go through it. I've got Chris out here now with a meter. He's just going to check all of those connections. But what he did just say to me is they do look quite grotty. Was that the word you used? Across those fuses, they could all do with a, a bit of a clean up, maybe some spray grease or something on there. Are you filming that now? Yeah, I am, yeah. Sorry, I'm not filming that, no. Oh. How are we looking? Yeah. Yeah, they're all, they're all fine. But the voltage is very low. Yeah, I've got... Oh, I haven't got the jump pack on it. Yeah, sometimes I don't like the jump pack anyway, do they? No, they don't. Yeah, I would say just go and get a new battery first off. What, and then we clear the codes? Yeah, because we've had this before with the voltage, and it, yeah, it only needs someone to try it with a low battery on it. Yeah. And if them all them sensors that are flagged up, they're working outside their parameter voltage. Yeah. It flags up as they're faulty. I'll it's tell you, not, it's just their input voltage is too low. Right, while you so, was there, I had said on camera, hey, it was my first fault. It is a possibility someone could have put a jump pack on this around the wrong way. You never know, do you? You don't know, but, do you? But you, you've got to start by having a good battery. We've been round in these circles. Clear the faults, yeah. crank it, yeah. then read the faults again and see what new faults Well, I'll whip down, a good battery. I'll whip down to our favorite place in the world. And, yeah. get a, and get a good battery, so got a oil cap, oil and cap a dipper. water cap as well. Yeah. I have already bought out some gloves and a cap there to try and cap that off. Yeah. So We don't know if there's anything else being uh, taken off it. We no. don't. While you're gone, I'll take that lid off. Yeah. Don't look like it's been off. Nah. But I'll take it off and I'll check inside, see if anyone's 
pulled any fuses. Relay. Because this, this won't be the first time we've had that either. The oh. MV200 had a fuse missing, didn't it? But it might not be a, 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 anything sinister. It might be they just needed the bits for something else. Yeah. Right, let's go and get you know a battery. I mean? Let's start with a good battery. Just got back, guys. Chris, Chris is down the field. But he actually had an engine there. And he said, Rob, I can't really let you buy that. So he's lent it to me. So we've got an oil cap there and a water cap. Uh, he did say I could have it, but I've rung the dealer and ordered both of these parts, brand new. So we'll return that one tomorrow. I've actually... All right, mate. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. See if it fits. Yeah, we've got to give it back. Right. Obviously, I've ordered a new one oh, and that as well. That's, that's off a of Renault thing. car. So right. I've got two batteries because oh, you had two nice. decent ones there on the shelf. Yeah. Um, how do you get on with the fuses and relays? Nothing missing. No. All, all check out all right. Yeah, I've been in there. I've been inside the car, so. But well, we've, we'll put a new battery on yeah. it, put them on, see how we get on. And it'd be nice to check the oil, actually. Pull, put that in and pull that straight out. Oh, she's got oil. Yeah, a well, that's, low, that's handy. Um, guys, a little bit of a sneak peek. You can see there is two batteries there. That is actually one of those is for another project that you're going to be seeing next week. We got that nice new battery fitted and we put the jump pack on there just for a bit of extra because quite often these batteries do say recharge and retest where they've been sitting for quite a while so that's all the codes that yeah, and there's quite it, a lot in there all them faults, right? no so if you clear dtc's yes that will clear them mm -hmm. so ecm's come up green straight away and that said six red faults i think abs that's come up clear the dash is uh going crazy there that's actually going quite quick. I was going to cut there and then cut back in, but I won't. Mind you, I spoke too soon, didn't I? Yeah, what I'll probably do, guys, is let that process, let that completely clear, and then what we do, a complete rescan again before we even touch that key. That would really what we want to do and see if anything yeah. obvious comes I, straight I bet back. most of them are voltage-related. I do as low, well. Low voltage. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Right, back in a minute it's come back and all of them have cleared so what chris is going to do is just do another quick scan just to make sure that none of them have stored because if they're stored we'll leave the ignition on they will come back straight away but fingers crossed i'll tell you what we do we turn the ignition off turn it back on they and should, then they should be cleared from the from the vehicle now i know but i'd like to do another so scan I, and just see if I, anything i would un... say crank it and then do another scan do you want to yeah well, give um... it a quick crank and then we scan it and see what's what comes back. Yeah, right, yeah. turn the ignition off. I... Pull that OBD out. Yeah. And then, I don't know if it's got a glow light. It's a bit tight, isn't it? Has it got... You ready? Yeah, leave it out, mate. Yeah, I'll never, ever leave them plugged in. Crank it when you're ready. Wang it over, as we say. <laughs> no way! No way! It can't be that easy. All voltage, mate. All, all voltage related. No way, Chris. It can't be that easy. Can't be. It Turn it again. <laughs> Unbelievable. We've never, ever... No. Oh, we've got seatbelt door open. Parking brake. Mate. Yeah. That's it, mate. We've had some luck, but oh, we've okay. never had luck like that. Try the uh, clutch and that. Don't go too far, though, because the jump pack's on it. No way. I, I cannot believe that. I wasn't expecting it. You're going to have to have 63,000 miles. You're going to have to give it a drive, mate. It's got no MOT. If, well, it's got to go for MOT. Book an MOT. Book it in. Take it now. Yeah. Give it a run. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, Chris, honestly, look at my face. I can't believe that. That, don't ha that just don't happen, does it? So, there is one actual lesson here this van wasn't sabotaged was it probably not they, they, have, nicked, they have nicked some bits they might that... have nicked them for another van more than 
might have been nothing, nothing yeah. sinister there. They might have just needed them. On one, I, don't <laughs> I, know, I can't believe that. Listen to it as well. Give it a little rev. That sounds perfect. Let's get this buttoned up and I'll ring up and get it booked in for an MOT. Right, so if anyone told me this morning that I was getting in this van halfway through the day and taking it for an MOT, I wouldn't have believed it. Unbelievable. Let's see how it gets on. I just, I don't know what to say about this van, guys. It's just getting better and better. Straight for an MOT, no problems at all. But what I did notice is it has actually done less than 500 since its last MOT. So we're pretty much good to go with it. I have just rung up um, and ordered all the filters and the oil for it. So we're doing oil service on it. And also I'm queuing up at the car wash, gonna get it cleaned because it is quite mucky in here. And that back seat, I don't know if you remember guys, it's uh, it's quite moldy, but they look like they've never really been sat in. But really nice van, no complaints. One thing I will say though, definitely, it wouldn't pull the skin off a rice pudding. It is so slow. And as you can see there, limited to 68 miles an hour. Let's get it cleaned, uh, pick up the service kit, head back to the yard and get it finished off. Genuinely, what a lovely little van this has turned out to be. Not the fastest thing in the world, not very powerful, but probably because of that limiter. Got oil, oil filter, diesel there, diesel filter. We're going to get that swapped out, give it a bit of a service. I've secured that battery, that's all bolted down. All the caps are back on. It really is a nice little van. And as soon as you flick the key now, boom, it's on the button so quick. So it clearly... Obviously, the problem with it was all of those issues were due to a flat battery where someone's just kept wanging it over and then it's been left and they've put a jump pack on it. If they'd have put a jump pack on it, ran the wrong way, I think personally it may have blown something. But like Chris said, you never really know. But for the most part, what a lovely little van and what a nice, easy job. I can't believe, I still can't believe it was that simple. I'm going to get it jacked up. We probably won't bother time lapse in that, guys. You've seen us do all the filters and that before on previous videos and on other vehicles. So I'll crack on and get that done. Guys, I know I, I just said we're not gonna video this. So I've just come back. Chris just made a coffee and I've just done that bit of video and why he was doing it. And he said, what, is it nice? I said, Chris, it's a lovely van. It drives really nice, but what did I say? It's so slow. Pull the skin off a rice pudding. It, honestly, it's so slow. It's a joke. And he said, run me up the road in it quickly. So I pulled it in and I've just run Chris up the road. He went, yeah, Rob, that ain't right. And I, I'll be honest, I was questioning myself whether it was right or not. We just plugged the computer back in it and three faults come back up. Turbo charger pressure sensor. Mm. Two others related. Two other related to turbo. Where's your torch? You don't need to. Yeah. So Chris just said, well, I'll have a look down here. Those two pipes there, you can one, this side, you'll see one's there. bigger than the other. In fact, Chris, put them exactly where they just are. They were tucked. They were tucked. Behind there. Behind. I didn't look at them, I saw them first. He saw that there's two, obviously, pipes missing off of there. And then he's had a feel round, pulled them pipes out. Well, I'm going to take it all back because I've just cleared them coves and took it back up the road. And this little van flies. It's actually very, very powerful. I'll be honest, I, I was kind of questioning myself. I said three or four times, didn't I? It's slow, but but it, in fact, it's that powerful now. When I just put my foot down, when I went up the road, a green light flashed up here and told me to change gear. It got there so quick. So we are, are they plugged back in, Chris? Make sure it's out of gear. Swiss watch. It's beautiful. Like off, no, they ain't falling off. So if someone's pulled them off, someone's removed that, removed that, we are going to go over this now. We, we're not going to time lapse it. We're not going to video it. But we are going to give it a service and we're actually going to get right in there with a torch 
and just make sure everything's plugged in. Like I say, no warning lights, no issues driving it at all, but just for peace of mind, we want to check. It wouldn't be a lot. It wouldn't have gone through the MLT, would it? Well, it went through emissions without the turbo plugged in, probably because yeah. it couldn't get high enough. Yeah, probably, but yeah. It didn't have no warning lights, so they can't fail it for that. Anyway, let's Just get on. the under tray back on, doing the bolts up. We've dropped the oil out of it there, but he got most of it on the floor. We've had to clean the floor up. It was definitely due an oil change. It is quite black. We're going to get that new stuff in there, and the filter is there as well. So, moving along very swiftly with it. Just before we sit down, I guess crunch the numbers on this, Chris, isn't it? Yeah going to be no more videos there is one little part of the puzzle guys now i've just plugged it in for one last scan what did it say stop start voltage too low and stop start battery i don't think it actually used the word too low wasn't it? it was signal out, signal out of range something, something like that so this van the battery that come off it i've just looked is a 70 amp hour stop start obviously this van's got stop start that's a 60 amp normal battery. So I've just whipped over. I had to go over to Sheppy because Mark didn't have any and got a stop start 70 amp power battery. So we're going to put that on and that is going to finalise this little van. Guys, it is the end of the video, but I don't mind saying, would I be right in saying, Chris, there was some wishful thinking going on there, wasn't there? Because when that van fired up, I thought, we've nailed it here. We're going to get this done in a day in the morning and have the rest of the day to carry on with something else but it didn't quite work out like that it's actually just before five o'clock and it has took all day running back to the mot then just running back there to get a battery going around getting the bits it just a day just vanishes with us it really does but i will stand on and say we struck gold there with those vans we are really really chuffed we've had no major problems at all with any of them and it, it has it gone smoothly yes it has took all day but what a lovely job to get done in a day and i can see here there's a lump of profit in that van and it is ready to go so it will be listed on instagram in the next couple of days so just keep your eye open for it on there and as usual you'll have to inbox me your number and i'll go through them in order that they come in and give you a call back let's do the numbers on it so purchase price, we left a bid for it, 2750. He actually come back to me and said, will you give me 3,000 quid for it? I said, I'll give 3,000 pound for it, delivered. And he said, just have it for 2750. I'll see what I can do with delivery. And he found us a guy that done it for 240 pound. Now I actually give that guy my home postcode and he bought it to my house. He did travel all the way from Wolverhampton with a trailer. You'll see him in the beginning of this video. And I actually said to him, I'm really sorry, you know, can we go a few miles away and drop it off somewhere else? And I'll give him a tenner for a bit of dinner money. So 250 there. MOT today was 40, the valet was 20. Service kit, 70 pound. Oil cap and coolant cap. Now, I've got to give those back. I ordered new ones. They're gonna be here in the morning, 31 pound. From the dealer as well. So I thought that was quite reasonable. Fuel, when I went for MOT, unfortunately, I had to stop and put £10 in it, but everything seems to be going back to normal, so that was all right. The battery that I've just been and got, £40. Total price, £3,211. You'd love that van for that money. Absolutely fantastic. But we did take a gamble. It was a chance. It could have been toast. It could have been a lot, lot worse. We just got really lucky with it and we are over the moon. So £3,211, we are gonna ask for it. I've just looked, like I normally do, online. I know it said in the car vertical it was for sale back then for 6,500. But I've looked now and the cheapest one I can find is 7,395. We're gonna ask 6,000 quid for it. That is gonna give us a pre-tax profit of £2,789. We're happy with that, isn't we, Chris? Yeah. That's the bills paid for for another couple of months. And that's going to keep us providing cracking content for you guys. So if you did enjoy this video, please do it that thumbs up. Drop us a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the merchandise. The link is in the description. Like, subscribe and share. And we'll see you all very, very soon.
in the next one.